Hi, Russ of Aquarium X Pets here. A lot of people ask me why I keep garter snakes as pets. So today I'm going to give you 10 reasons why I think garter snakes make such fantastic pets, snakes, for a lot of people. Number one, I'm mostly diurnal. And as it happens, so are garter snakes. They're out and about when I am. So during the day, they're basking, they're climbing, they're exploring, and they're a joy to watch. Number two, garter snakes are inquisitive. They'll often see you coming from across the room and come right up to the front of the enclosure to see what you're doing. They'll investigate objects in and outside of their enclosure. And when I open the door, mine will often climb right out of the enclosure, onto my hand and up my arm, even when they aren't interested in food. In that way, they're a bit like the serpentine version of emerald tree skinks. Number three, garter snakes can become very tame. This does depend on the species, how you handle them, how frequently you handle them, and individual temperament, but most become quite accustomed to handling. Number four, these snakes are very communal. Many snake species should never be kept communally. There are some snake species that will tolerate conspecifics to some degree, but garter snakes often seem to do better when they're kept communally. Research has shown that garter snakes form social bonds, which they will remember even after long periods of separation. I'll put a link down in the description to an article about that. If you keep mixed sexes of garters together, they will almost certainly breed. But if you don't want to breed them, same-sex groups usually get along very well. In fact, you can even keep same-sex groups of different species of garter snakes together. Of course, you should avoid keeping mixed sexes of different species or subspecies of garters together, as they can, and most likely will, interbreed and make the gene pool rather muddy. Another thing to keep in mind when keeping garter snakes communally is to exercise caution while you're feeding them. Garter snakes have a mantra when it's time to eat. It goes something like this. I'll have what that other snake is having. Even I have to grab it and pull it out of its mouth. And or swallow its head. To minimize problems, you can offer big plates covered in very small pieces of food, or feed each snake in a separate enclosure, or tongue feed individually outside of the enclosure. And I've used each of these methods. Number five, garter snakes are a manageable size. In fact, you can choose size to some extent, as some species in the hobby get much larger than others. Lake Chapala garter snakes are on the larger end, reaching up to about four feet, about 121 centimeters, or possibly even larger. There is also quite a pronounced difference in size between males and females. Ruby here, a female red-sided garter snake, is around 40 inches long, or about 101 centimeters, and Rufus, a male of the same species, is closer to 30 inches long, but obviously much more slender. Number six, garter snakes come in many different colors and patterns. Not only are there a good number of different species and subspecies, there are also morphs. Don Belknap of Don's Garter Snakes, who produced my lovely red-sided and plains garters, and T of the Odd Tinoir, who produced my beautiful Melanistic Easterns, were kind enough to allow me to share these images with you to give you an idea of a few of the beautiful garters available. I have the pleasure of living fairly close to Don, so I've seen his snake room a couple of times. He also has a table at the Wasatch Reptile Expo, which is taking place on May 6th, 2023. So if you're in the Salt Lake City area, definitely check that out. But for those of you who live further away, you can check out his Facebook page, and I will have a link to that Facebook page down in the description. I have never had a chance to see the Odd Tinoir's collection in person, but I have interviewed T on a live stream, which you can check out. And of course, these video clips come from the Odd Tinoir's Instagram account, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link to that down in the description as well. Number seven, garter snakes are ovoviviparous. This really only comes into play if you're breeding them, but it does mean that breeding them is pretty simple as the female gives birth to live young. Number eight, garter snakes are excellent candidates for bioactive enclosures. They love to climb and explore, so they'll do well if you offer them an interesting environment, but do make sure they have a moisture gradient, a warm, moist place to help with shedding, as well as access to warm, dry, and cooler, dry areas. Garter snakes on uniformly damp substrate can suffer from skin problems. 
It's also good practice to keep fairly resilient plants with them as they will climb all over the plants and definitely damage fragile ones. Number nine, garter snakes are not terribly expensive to buy or to keep. It's fairly easy to find captive bred wild types of some varieties of garter snake for well under 100 US dollars, at least here in the USA. Some of the fancier species of morphs are more expensive, but even then, they're often less expensive than many other snakes. They're active snakes and should be given some space to roam and explore, but since the snakes are not gigantic, the enclosures don't have to be gigantic either. And number 10. If you are one of those people who would love to keep snakes, but would hate to feed frozen thawed rodents to your snakes, garters are a great option for you. Garter snakes can eat appropriately sized frozen thawed rodents, and personally I use them as a staple food with mine, but they can live healthy lives without needing to eat rodents. Alternatives that I have offered my garters include fish, avoiding fish high in thiaminase. I have used frozen thawed silver sides and endler's live bears, for example. I offer them night crawlers, but not red wigglers, which can make them sick. Reptilinks, and recently frozen thawed chicken hearts with a little vitamin mineral supplement. So those are my 10 reasons that garter snakes make excellent pets. I could probably think of several more, and I bet you could too. If you can, please leave me a comment about it, and thanks for watching. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays all about aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for all notifications so you don't miss my next video.